So, as always, I'm going to solve this SAT geometry problem in two different ways. First way is going to be completely straightforward using formulas. Uh, so that will be the kind of solution you might see in school. Second way, I think you'll really like, it's super sneaky SAT trickiness. So you'll definitely want to stay tuned for that. First things first, anytime you have a word problem, you always skip straight to the end because the end has the question, and the question here asks us, what is the perimeter of the shaded region? Now, the SAT loves to create strange shapes out of simpler shapes, and then they shade the region and they ask you something about it. The important thing to remember is that the strange shapes are always built from simpler shapes, so you need to pay attention to the simpler shapes. Specifically, the shaded region is built up of a small half circle, an identical small half circle, and a larger half circle. So all we need to do is figure out the links of each of those, and we're good to go once we add them up. Now, in the problem, they tell us that the smaller circles have radius 3. So this length would be 3, and let's go ahead and label the diameter of the smaller circle, which is the radius of the larger circle, as 6. Now we got to start organizing our information and go about adding up the perimeter. You'll notice I've pretty much ignored this middle portion of the word problem. The reason why is that it kind of doesn't give us any new information. It's sort of just telling us that these circles are tangent to each other, blah, 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 but we can tell that from the picture. So if you're wondering why I ignored that part, it's because we don't really need it to solve the problem. Now, number one is a semicircle which means its uh, perimeter, uh, the circumference, will be half of the perimeter of the whole circle. So it will be half pi times diameter. Diameter was going to be 6 for the smaller circle. So 1 half pi times 6 gives us 3 pi. That's the length for 1. It's also the length for 2. So we can say 1 equals 2 equals 3 pi. Notice how I'm labeling each portion clearly, and then I'm using my labels to indicate my calculations. I encourage you to adopt a similarly careful technique with all of this, because otherwise you're just going to get lost. Number three, one half pi times capital D, I'm using capital D because it's a bigger diameter, capital D here is 12, and so this is going to equal one half pi times 12 which is, of course, 6 pi. Finally, we just have to add up 6 pi plus 3 pi plus 3 pi again. So I should say 2 times 3 pi. 6 pi plus 2 times 3 pi is going to give us 12 pi. So there's the super straightforward school way to do the problem. Now let's look at how we can do this to exploit the fact that this is a multiple choice question on the SAT. So same question, different technique. We're interested in the perimeter of the shaded region. I want you to think of these answers as actual numbers. And to do that, I want you to think of pi as approximately 3. 
let's do our best to actually measure the perimeter of the shaded region. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to use the radius of the larger circle, which is we're told is 6. We're going to use that as well as the radius of the smaller circle, which we're told is 3. We're going to use these as guides to estimate the perimeter. So let's count, count out what we think the perimeter might be of the smaller circles. So that looks like about 3. That looks like about 3. That looks like about 3. Something like that. So maybe it's about 9. That means this one is also about 9. Now let's figure out what we think the larger half circle might be. Well, that might be about 6, that might be about 6, that might be about 6. So, all told, the larger half circle might be about 18. Put it all together, 9 plus 9 plus 18 is 36. Which of these answers is closest to 36? It's D. Now, of course, I'm not telling you that this is the best way to solve this problem, but it's better than most ways of guessing. So, <clears throat> keep this in mind the next time you're totally stumped on a geometry problem. If you're careful enough, you can sometimes estimate the answer so closely that you can tell which of the multiple choices has to be correct. You'll get better at this if you practice a lot. So I encourage you to do this with as many geometry problems as you possibly can. Use this method as your second way of doing problems.